Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Caldwell and I will be your instructor for CSIS 1190 Excel for Business. In this course, uh, we are going to be focusing on uh, learning Excel, although there will be a little bit of, of information on Word and a little bit on operating systems as well. But in this video, I want to spend time going over the Blackboard course and what you're going to need to go through this course and all the details. So if you're watching this video, you probably have already been into the Blackboard site. And I'm going to just go over here and kind of go over the, the, uh, the main links here that we've set up. The first one that you'll be pre presented with is the sign-up sheet. Now, that sign-up sheet will be on there for a couple of weeks until we're done with uh, signing up for the course and the, sh and the wait lists have all been completed. Uh, the second one is called the course outline. And this is the one that I'm going to spend the majority of the time on in this video right here and go over all the details that you're going to need to know to do this online course. So let's get started here. Um, when you go to the course, you're going to kind of, you can go through this uh, sequentially. If you see the blue links, definitely click on them, try them out. This one right here is the official web site for this course at Douglas College. This is probably the site that you guys went to when you signed up for this course. And that's what I have to follow. So that's the general idea of what this course is going to entail and then how I deliver it will be uh, presented here in my course outline, which I'm going to go over here. Now, the link below that is a link to the videos that I produce. So I'll be put, putting together some instructional videos and this will also be accessible right here at the video link or the video lectures link here over on the left hand side will also open that up. If you look there, it talks about the course outline which is what we're doing right now. The uh, course outline for the schedule, uh, you know, why are you learning Excel and so on. So I'll be actually going over a lot of that in this video right now. But uh, that's that's there for you guys to have a look at. And if you have any other questions, if these don't answer it, send me an email and I'll try to do another video post it. And I'm sure other students will have the same question. All right. So that's a little bit about the uh, video lectures that I'll be producing. This course is for summer 2020 and there are two sections, uh, 005, 006. And uh, we've got a, about 70 students in this uh, course. Now with Douglas, because this was originally scheduled for a face-to-face -face class, they did have it um, set up for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So section 006 was set up from 3.30 till 6.20 and 005 is set up from 12.30 till uh, 2.20. Now, there's not going to be face-to-face -face lectures, but I will be online available during these times. So if you have questions, emails, that sort of thing. And from time to time, I'll be doing a similar broadcast like we are looking at right now, uh, possibly in uh, YouTube. I can just basically stream this to YouTube and we can have a face-to-face -face kind of lecture. Uh, and you guys can ask questions and I can go over uh, materials and that sort of stuff um, as we need it. But this course is filled with videos, video classes, and interactive learning tools to learn uh, this material. So that's how we're going to be delivering it this term. Now, I will be doing uh, assessments, quizzes, midterm, final, that sort of thing. And I'm scheduling them currently at Wednesdays at 12.30 till 1.20. So this is when they have to be conducted. So I'm going to try to uh, f stick with that. And these are all scheduled in an online tool. So you guys can look at your schedule. And I'll go through a video on that one later and show you how to uh, open those up and conduct the quiz. Now, you have an hour window to take about a 15-minute quiz. So anytime in that hour, you should log in, complete the quiz. And remember, it has to be Pacific Standard Time. Because we're doing this online, people could be from all over the world. Just make sure you set it for the British Columbia or Vancouver time which is uh, the Greenwich Mean Time is minus eight hours. All right my, my name again is Ryan Caldwell there's my, my link and what this will this is a link to my LinkedIn account and I, I put this up here so you can see who I am. Also you guys I would encourage you to have a LinkedIn profile. If you don't have a LinkedIn profile definitely go in set one up. You guys have access to LinkedIn learning and I've added some LinkedIn learning classes to this course. So that means that there's some video uh, courses or virtual courses uh, that you guys can uh, complete. Now, when you complete that, you will actually get a certification 
from LinkedIn Learning that gets added to your LinkedIn account. And this is a great way to show employers that you've taken extra courses. Um, and don't think this is just for Excel. LinkedIn Learning has thousands of different courses that you guys can do throughout your entire educational track. And at Douglas, they give you a free enterprise version to LinkedIn Learning. And this costs us at the college here quite a bit. It's about $20 a month per student. So definitely take advantage of that. It's kind of like having a Netflix account, but for education. And I definitely recommend you guys can binge as many courses as you want. <clears throat> All right. You can see here, I've done a lot of LinkedIn Learning courses. Uh, there's several here. And then before LinkedIn Learning, there was lynda.com. And then I've done other courses in the Microsoft Technology Associate certification for C Sharp and other uh, certifications. I really recommend this because these are very applied practical skills. Employers look at these and say, oh, wow, this person has gone above and beyond their course materials and actually got an industry certification. So definitely consider this. And this course is prime for that. In fact, there is a certification for this course. It's the, the Microsoft Office Specialist or MOS uh, Specialist in Excel. And I've done the exam myself a few times. Uh, this will be an exam that you also probably will get uh, similar to this if you get shortlisted for a job. And if you get shortlisted for a job, that's great, but they will probably want to test you as well in Excel. So they will put you in front of a computer and give you a simulated environment to test your skills. And that simulated environment is what I'm going to be showing you in this course. So you guys should be extremely well prepared for those um, exams that you're going to probably take in an HR department within a company when you get a job interview. So if they're shortlisted you, they'll probably put you through that process. And if you pass, you might get the job. If you don't pass, more than likely you probably won't get the job. So Excel is an extremely applied skill. All companies really want you to have this. I don't think it's you're going to find many jobs out there in the business world that, that isn't going to require you to know Excel. It, usually at the end where they want you to have uh, skills, they'll say proficiency with Microsoft Excel, maybe Word, uh, maybe Outlook um, or PowerPoint or something like that. But Excel is definitely the big one. And that's one of the key reasons why we teach it in this program and that all business students really need a strong foundation in Microsoft Excel. All right, so there's that's enough of my sales pitch on the course. Let's get back to the course outline. Uh, my email address, good way to communicate with me is right here. I will be online uh, during the times that I'm going to set out here so you can co contact me, but any contact me anytime. I, I, I'm on the computer pretty much every day for at least five hours a day or more. So I do respond to emails quite quickly if I can. Keep in mind, though, that we are in Pacific Standard Time. Boy, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna mention that a lot. Now, when it comes to the e-textbook, students are saying, "Well, how much is the book? Where do I get the book?" Big question. And this is where you get it. The link is right here. It's in a system called My IT Lab. It's by a company called Pearson. They're the publishers. Some of you might already have this if you're working with accounting or statistics or other groups also have the My IT or My Lab. And this particular one's called My Lab, but it's the IT. A quick way to get there is the URL called myitlab.com. It's another quick way of doing it. It will take you to the landing page to sign in, this same page. Now, you will have to go in here and register uh, as a student. If you've already got an account, you can sign in and add this account, my class, to your existing account. So either way, it's up to you on how you want to do that. Uh, you will need another email address if you create a new account, though. All right, now, to get into access to my Excel class, you need to click on the next link here, which is my personal code with, with Pearson. So here's the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get set up. So follow the instructions. Click on the link, which is the same link as I've just explained. Click on student and so on. This is the course that you need to type in. It's Caldwell 14408. And the only other thing I'll mention here is that you can pay for this course or the, the e -book, book and the entire Mighty Lab simulated training environment. And it's $99 US. I know that's the that's the tough part. But if we bought it at the bookstore, I think it's $169 plus taxes Canadian. So I think you save about $30 or $40 if you buy it online. So I don't know if that helps or not. But a thing that you might want to start off with is this one right here. Get temporary access. What that is, is it'll give you 14 days free to try it out. 
so you can get all access to all the materials as if you're a regular student without paying for 14 days. But after 14 days, if you don't pay, it just cuts you off. So make sure you get it uh, purchased before 14 days. Maybe you just want to try out the course. But you might end up dropping the course for some reason. And that way you won't have to invest any money into the course. So a great way to try it out. All right, let's get back to the course outline. Now, students are located around the world for this. You guys are probably somewhere in another country, possibly. So regardless of where you are, um, you need to, to set up the your clock so that it's at Pacific Standard Time or minus eight hours Greenwich Mean Time. You also have to make sure that the system that you set up in MIT Lab is set up for the same one. Because when you're handing in assignments, it's looking at the clock here in Vancouver, which is that PST, that Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you get that done. Now, the course itself, you know, what, what are we doing here? The majority of the course, as the, as the title of the course implies here, is that it's going to be majority of Microsoft Excel. There are some basic other um, knowledge here that you're gonna, we're going to be learning, which is an operating system, Windows 10, configuration setups, basic use of how to use the operating system, just good to know stuff. Now, that's we're going to only spend a week on that. The next week after that, we're going to do Microsoft Word, Chapter 1, 2, 3. And these chapters are relevant for students who need to do like citations and, and, and format it to make it look, your, your uh, reports look good. And even when you're in business, how to make reports look good, you'll carry on those skills throughout your career. So, but after that, from week three till 14, we're basically going to spend all of our time in Microsoft Excel. That's why we call it Excel for Business. So, it's, and it's primarily an Excel course. So when you're reading the course description, this is what the course, and they, they really emphasize, you know, talking about file and folder management, security and backup. Um, yes, but the majority of the work is Excel topics and basic fundamentals, advanced functions, what if analysis and macros. I mean, will we be talking about word processing a little bit? Databases, well, yeah, a little bit of database within Excel. Uh, presentation software, not really. Um, it's not really covered in, in, in here, except for the um, presentations that we'll be giving you uh, for learning the tool, but not showing you actually how to do PowerPoint, for example. All right, another thing I'd like to draw to your attention is, currently I'm gonna be scheduling all the quizzes for Wednesdays between 12.30 and 1.30 Pacific Standard Time. So that means you can log in uh, at that time. The quiz will pop up, be available, you just write it at home, submit it. I think I give you about 15, 20 minutes to write the quiz. So if you, as long as you write it within that hour, it shouldn't be a problem. If you don't show up, then you didn't show up, so you're late. It's kind of like if you showed up, didn't show up for a quiz uh, at school, and you, you didn't get to rewrite. So there's no rewrites on quizzes. Assignments, they're a little different. You basically have access to all the assignments right now. So if you want, you can work ahead and keep working on all of the assignments over here. So you can start on Word assignment number one, Word assignment two and three, and then all the Excel assignments from that point forward. These are all due the week of that they're scheduled. So for, let me explain. Right here is week three. The Word assignment will be one, will be due on week three, the end of week three, which is actually on a Sunday before midnight. And again, that's Pacific Standard Time. So if you guys haven't set your clocks correctly, you could end up trying to submit, but be hours over the due date, or you could have hours before the due date. So keep it in mind. All right, I have to schedule these things just because of the nature of an online course. It just can't have an open box where you can, but you can hand them in early. So this one, you've got literally three weeks to get this one done from the time from today. That's where, like today is uh, May 4th. This is the first day of class, May 4th, 2020. So you guys have three weeks to get that first assignment in. The next one you have four weeks. You have five weeks to get this, six weeks. So you guys have lots of time to get these assignments in. Don't wait till the last minute to get these in. Hand them in early. And I'll explain a little more about the assignments uh, as, we, as, we, as we get to the assessment here and other options that you have. All right, so basically from there, uh, this is the schedule that we're going to be following. And each week after week two, we're going to be basically doing one chapter in Excel per week up until chapter 10, which is pretty much a, a comprehensive level of Microsoft Excel. 
Now, Excel carries on. We could take Excel. In fact, we have another course called uh, CESA 3190, and it basically goes on from Chapter 10 to Chapter 12, and we start getting into the programming language of Excel, which is Visual Basic for Applications, which is more of a data analytics. So if you're in the, the, uh, the data analytics stream for CSIS or from the accounting or marketing, all of those programs could benefit by that course because you really have to get into Excel's advanced functions. If you're pursuing data analytics, Excel is going to be one of your go-to tools. You got to be extremely good at this tool if that's if that's your career pick. All right, let's move on to assessments. Now, assessments, we've got four kind of key things here we're going to do. Assignments being the first one, worth 25% of your marks. There's 13 assignments. They're, they're listed over here, assignment number one for Word, Assignment number two and three for Word and so on. Uh, Word chapter one is only worth one mark. I, I just did that because it, it fits well, well with my, my marking scheme right here. It's also the first assignment. Sometimes students are struggling with trying to get the first one in. Um, but I'm going to give you guys two submissions. That means you can submit it once. The system will mark it, give you the feedback, tell you what you did wrong, tell you what you did right. You can go back and correct what you did wrong and resubmit it again. And what happens is a lot of students end up getting like 90 or 100% on their assignments because they can go back, fix their mistakes. And I do this not just because I'm a nice guy, but I'm doing this because I want you guys to learn what the mistake you made, go back and correct it, and then get that mark. And I find when I've, I've, I've done this course several times, and I find students really like that approach because they really do figure out what their mistakes were. It's only worth 25 marks, which I uh, expect all students to get close to 25 marks on their assignments. It's, they're kind of fun in a way once you get into them, once you know how the system works, but make sure you get it handed in before the, the due date, which is that Sunday night before 11.59, not midnight. I had students handing it at 11.59 and 10 seconds, and it was late, and I couldn't give them a mark because I've got a policy. And if I break my policies, I have to break it for everybody. Once I start breaking policies, things just don't work out very well. So unfortunately, I'd like to give some slack sometimes, but get it in before 10 seconds before the, the class. People have slow internet sometimes. They say, oh, I can't get it because my internet's slow. Hey, get it in an hour early. Shouldn't be a problem. All right. Uh, moving on. Quizzes and tests, or just quizzes in this case. There are 11 simulated quizzes. Now, in simulated quiz is where you actually get it, the Microsoft Word or Excel, and you have to, it asks you a question, let's say, enter some data and sum up a total, and you actually do it in a practical way. So this shows me that you can do it in a practical way. The assignments are, here's a list of instructions, do what the instructions are, and then submit it. With the simulation, it'll say, well, let's enter in some data directly, let's maybe sum up a, a group of numbers, and it'll, move you on to the next step or not. If you do it wrong, I think it gives you four attempts. If you do it wrong, okay, try again, try again, try again. After four attempts, it just moves you to the next question. So you'd have to go back and practice, you know, why didn't you get that question right? So they're mostly worth 2%, but the last quiz, uh, chapter 10 of Excel, is worth three because it's, it's uh, a little bit more uh, work. Now, moving on to the midterm and the final. These are both structured very similarly. These are both assignment styles. That means that I will give you a, a list of instructions to complete within a time frame. And <clears throat> the word midterm is set up for chapters 1 to 3, which is worth 8% of your mark. Excel chapters four, 1 to 4 is worth 12% of your marks. And I've break, broken the mark distribution down like this. So uh, definitely want you to... Uh, uh, all this material right here that you're going to get is almost identical to the assignments that you've done up here. So these assignments are in preparation to do the midterm. In fact, everything you're going to see up here in the assignments is duplicated here. It's not the exact same. The learning objectives are the same, but there's different. it's a different scenario. It's a different case study. It's different data, but the concepts are the same. The learning objectives are the same. So if you've done these well, then you will ace this. And I find there's usually a direct correlation between students that have a, a high mark here, their correlation of their mark here is very similar because they're almost the same. If they practice their assignments, they do very well on the midterm. I find students have, my class average last year was 77%, which is extremely high for a class average. And 
it, I think it had a lot to do with because the way this course was set up and the feedback I got from students in the last couple terms was that they, they liked it. Once they got into it and they learned how the system worked, they liked it because they could just spend a lot of time, get through the materials, work ahead if they want. You don't have to worry, worry about me waiting for a lecture. Go ahead and just carry on. Do an extra week or two if you want to get ahead and, and give yourself some more flexibility, some time. The final is pretty much the same as the midterm, except that I will be reassessing chapters one to four. One to four is the is the fundamentals of Excel. They want We want you to be extremely efficient at this. And the, the system will teach you guys how to do things in an efficient way. There is many ways to add up numbers in Excel, but there are more efficient ways than others. So we want to show you the most efficient ways. And that's what employers want. They want you to be fast, efficient, effective, and well formatted. So that's what we're going to do in chapters one to four. Uh, the last section uh, part, there's actually two parts to the final. The second part is chapters five to 10. And you can see that the, the percentage breakdown is, is relevant to that. It's, it's a, a reasonable ratio here. Now, the final, because this is online, this is really up to us. When do we want to do it? Do we want to wait until August 15th to do it or do we want to do it earlier? I'm kind of of the thinking that we've already completed the course. Everything's fresh in your mind. Let's do it right away. So I'm kind of thinking we could do this either on August the 5th or August the 6th, as soon as we finish the course, to get the final out of the way. But we'll have further discussions on that as the course progresses. All right, so that's a little more about the assessment and how you're going to get an A. And the other thing I'll say here is that your marks are built into this system. You will know what your marks are instantly when you've submitted or when you've completed a quiz. It will keep track of your grades. You'll know exactly what it is. It's all in, in the system. All right, and I'll show you that later because it's... All right, the learning objectives, I think I'll let you guys go over those. You can read those, the course content, the same thing. Best practice for learning and studying. One thing I'll say about this is it's, a, it's an online class. I would highly recommend you guys schedule yourself. Get a scheduling tool of some sort, write it down, just set yourself up for every, you know, every day from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock. Get on, do your Excel work, and uh, get ahead of the game. And get some, um, get a comfortable amount of, of, of time. Maybe you can work a week ahead if you want. Um, I, a lot of students do that in my class. So students ask me, you know, uh, from time to time, like, how long does this, you know, how much time should I, should I be spending with your online class? And I've had some students actually uh, do it in around five hours a week, but I would say a comfortable range would be about 10 hours. Schedule yourself 10 hours. That's at least two hours per day for five days. Just say every day from 12 o'clock till two o'clock or three o'clock and work on your Excel uh, uh, work, your assignments, your online resources. USB drives, back up all your stuff, keep track of it, whichever method you want. I will say one thing that you guys all have access to office.com. So just type in office.com is something you can put on your to-do list this week. Log in with your Douglas College authentication and you guys have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and you also have access to the online OneDrive. The, the college has bought uh, student drive cost storage of a terabyte. So everybody gets one terabyte of, of online storage. So organize your all your class uh, files in the online storage. Highly recommend it. That way you don't have to worry about, um, you know, you know, USBs, losing them or whatnot. All right, moving on. There's my email. If you do email me, send it from your Douglas College email. I know this is a bit of a hassle. Uh, it if you send it from another email server, it may not work. I've had students that have sent stuff to me and it just didn't work. Uh, I didn't get through because the Gmail was being blocked or the Hotmail was blocked. I think, what was it, yahoo.com was being blocked. I guess they've been hacked so many times that they block, started blocking it. So I wasn't getting emails. So definitely uh, send it from the, the college or, I mean, I might get it. If I do get it, I'll definitely respond, but just a note there. Uh, course format, How is it going? To, what are some of those extra skills you're going to need? Uh, you're going to have to really, uh, hopefully we're going to develop a little creative thinking and problem solving, especially analyzing data and solving problems. This is really one of the big things companies all want people to, to have. Taking data, looking at data, looking at a financial situation, and 
analyzing it and looking at, can we get more information out of it? Can we generate, can we calculate more information? Can we visualize the data somehow in Excel? How can we do that with a variety of different problems? As, as we progress through the chapters, you'll be presented with case studies in each, uh, each chapter. And each of those chapters are gonna really encourage you guys to, to think creatively and come up with and solve a problem. There is even room in these case studies to come up with even more ideas. So always start to look at this thing and say, is there something more I could generate with this? You know, I've got a column of numbers. I can add it up. Sure, I can calculate averages. But is, can I generate even new column of, of information? Can I multiply different things together, uh, create ratios or whatnot? So I want you to start thinking about the data and start working on that skill. And ultimately, this is a great skill to be able to have. And employers seek this skill. In fact, a lot of interviews, they will ask you questions that will try to entice to see, are people thinking creatively about a problem? They'll, they'll put up a, a, a scenario and they want to see what you can come up with. So if we can practice that in this course and, and become, at least see what we're trying to get to and then start working on that. And then as you're in other courses, start to develop your critical thinking, it's got to be one of the best tools uh, that you guys can develop. Personal management is going to be a big part because this is an online class and I've done online classes. You know, you got to be disciplined. You got to force yourself. Set up uh, a reminder. Have your phone chime in and say, hey, time to study Excel. There is going to be a lot of reading of technical materials. Uh, it's just how it is. Uh, and so on. Some mathematical skills, some technology skills that we're going to be learning in the class. So these are all additional, you know, things that you're going to be expected to uh, do in this course. Workload, I think we've talked about it. Uh, the evaluation, the assessment, we've talked about that, except that the grade center will be in the My IT Lab. And it's a great tool. Students just always can go in there and look and they know exactly what they're getting in the course. Late assignments, my policy is, will not be graded. So if you hand in your assignments late, for whatever reason, it really doesn't matter because you guys are given this stuff in weeks, if not months in advance. It's like a deadline going into the office. Your boss wants you to get a report done. It's got to be in. He might have a meeting coming up. If you don't get it done, it's not getting into the meeting. It would cause a problem. And I, I mean, I think it's uh, it's not unreasonable to ask students to hand it in, especially when I've provided the schedule. So if you haven't got the assignment in, then you just you, you miss out on the two marks. So try not to do that because um, every two marks helps. It really does. Okay, quizzes, same thing. If you miss a quiz, you don't show up, again, that's not going to work. So definitely uh, make the schedule uh, in one of your apps. Use Outlook, use whatever app it takes to schedule yourself. Attendance and participation, that's up to you guys, when you guys really want to schedule yourself. I've got some online time where I will be available to answer questions, help you guide you through it. Again, I'm going to try to probably do a... I, I use a tool called OBS and Studio, and it's a it's a free stream. That's what I'm using right here. That's what this camera is, and that's what this tool is. And it also connects to YouTube, and I can do live streams. So I'm going to investigate that. I haven't done that, but it sounds kind of neat. I'm going to try that out. Plagiarism and cheating. Oh, it always comes up every term. In fact, I've got a new role at Douglas College as the Academic Integrity uh, officer where uh, you guys if you're brand new to the college you will probably be given an email in the next week by me uh, or the EI the AIE uh, person uh, to take an online course for uh, extracting on what academic integrity is it's a big problem uh, has been in the past we're trying to alleviate that problem uh, because it's so easy online to just grab stuff online paste cut and, and that sort of stuff and hand it in so, and there's so many tools now to catch that now. So as an instructor who does a lot of this stuff, um, uh, I've, I've caught several people doing that and it's problematic for the student and for me and everybody else. I just don't like to go through it. So whatever you do, uh, you do your own work. And um, if you have any questions about that, there's a link right here for the policy um, if you have any questions. Now, when it comes to this course here specifically, Mighty Lab has an anti-plagiarism algorithm. And what that means is when you log on to your account and download your file to work on it to do your assignment, and then you're going to upload that back to get marked, sometimes students may, hypothetically, 
might complete the assignment and get a perfect mark. So then they might pass it on to a friend in the class and the friend says, hey, this looks good. They'll just copy and paste it into their own assignment or just change the name and submit it on their own. What MIT Lab does is they actually have the, they have embedded hidden codes within the system that tags you to that document. And if somebody else uses your document or you use somebody else's document, th that ID shows up. And it sends me a report, says, hey, uh, just to, to alert me that that report has been used twice. And in that case, both parties, regardless of the ownership, receives a zero and could get a letter from the dean's office. So whatever you do, don't do that. It's a big problem uh, for you guys. Um, so I think that's enough said about that. Um, unofficial withdrawal, let you read that. Class cancellation shouldn't be a problem. We're doing this online. Uh, student conduct policy, probably not a problem either. Uh, it's just general etiquette online, talking behavior, uh, or when we're in class, what is acceptable or not. And here is my uh, time that I'm available. My office hour is 11.30 till 12.30. So I should say 11.30 till 12.30 is my office hour. And then I'll be online as well for the class on Wednesdays. Thursdays I'll probably be there, be there as too from, from 3 o'clock, I think it was 3.30 or 3 till 6.20. I'll also be available. I have two sections, two different groups, so I, I kind of uh, accommodate both groups for those times. All right, so that's kind of a course overview of how I'm gonna run this. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me an email and I will catch you in the next video.